Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about particle systems. More specifically, I'm going to be talking to you about how to create and edit things such as hair, fur, and grass. Um, I'm going to show you how to create them and then um, edit them using these type menus as well as how to edit the hair particles in the um, more interactive particle uh, section which will show you how to actually physically and sort of tangibly um, interact with the hair. Uh, so first things first, you want to create an object on which to grow hair, be it your plane for grass or in this case we're going to start with a sphere that can sort of act as a human head. Um, so make sure you're in object mode, have your object selected, and then go to the particles tab which is this little uh, these little star-like objects here. Um, so all you have to do is click on add a particle system and all of this lovely data comes up. Um, so particle systems are by default emitter types which is basically which basically means that in physics this is going to start dropping particles such as rain or something like that. So uh, that's not what we're after. What we want to do is go under type and change it from emitter to hair. Now you see automatically we have a bunch of uh, hair-like particles shooting out from our sphere. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is to go over a few of the basic parameters. There are many, 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 many parameters within all of these menu items here that you can change to uh, tweak the hair, you know, go in and, and um, experiment and see how you like the effects, but I'm just going to cover the basics uh, today. Um, so, uh, first panel we have, um, you're always going to want to rename your uh, particle system just so you can keep tell it apart from the other ones that you might have in your scene. So, uh, I'm going to call this hair. Um, so, aside from the type, we have a few uh, different options going on. Um, the one you need to be aware of is this um, segments. What this parameter does is tells Blender how many segments to cut the or to uh, to separate the hair into. Think of it as um, subdivision on a normal mesh. Basically the more segments your hair strand has the um, smoother it will be when it is animated. So um, it will look like it has it will look smooth and flowing like a like a wire instead of looking like it has joints, like a bug leg or something. So higher the number of segments, smoother your um, your hair is going to be. This is really something you need to only worry about if you have uh, long hair. If you have fur, grass, or very short hair, you really only don't need to change this. Five is just fine. Even less than that is okay too. Okay, uh, second, um, second menu here you need to worry about is emission. Um, some people can really sort of screw themselves over here by um, adding too many particles and therefore crashing Blender and their computer. So I'll show you a little trick of how to get more particles without expending more of your computer's CPU to render it um, and more time and effort. So um, a thousand for something like this is fine. Okay, um, if you have a huge, huge plane that you're trying to fill up with the grass, you might need to increase this, but for something for something like this, a thousand is just fine. Even though it looks a little sparse, I'll show you how to make that better. So don't you don't really need to tweak with this too much. Um, there are other ways of making the hair much fuller than this. Okay, hair length, um, pretty straightforward. You know, the less this number is, the less, the shorter your hair is. So this looks like a pretty manageable size. We'll go with two. Okay, um, don't need to worry about this. Um, hair dynamics. This is um, basically um, you would check this if you want to use physics in calculating your hair dynamics. Um, so if you want to let physics and gravity uh, affect what's going to happen to your hair, check that. And then there are all sorts of uh, parameters that you can change in here as far as how stiff the hair is, the mass, bending, these are all pretty straightforward so if you just want to um, play around with those and see what you get. Um, okay, so the next one I want to talk about um, is the children's panel and this goes back up to uh, 
what I was talking about with the emissions panel. If you want this to look fuller than it is, but you don't want to spend the extra effort to uh, render so many other hair particles, then you want to go under children and uh, click either simple or interpolated. Um, interpolated tends to look a little more random. So there you have it. There are uh, several more hair strands than um, there were before because for every, basically what children means is that for every one strand of hair that you have here, there are 10 more to go with it displayed. And when you render it, there will be 100 more. So when you render it, you uh, get something pretty pretty full without having to um, having to crash blender it might even be a little too much for now this one up oh, there it goes so there you can see um, as it's rendering the you can't even see the sphere anymore the uh, particle system is so thick because of all the children now it just looks like a giant fuzzy ball so um, you definitely want to use the children if you're trying to make something look really full and fluffy without having to increase this up to a million or something like that. Okay, okay. Um, under children there are all sorts of parameters. Again, you can um, go ahead and experiment with these. If you want to see more in the blender window, you know, increase this, you know, you can decrease this, increase this to your liking until you get something that you want in your render window. Um, and uh, you, uh, basically all of these, changing all of these guys, the effects, um, the roughness, they sort of just create like a randomness too and the more random your um, the more random your particle system looks really the better especially if you're doing fur or grass or something like that um, so just add a little bit of randomness anywhere you can you can just see the different different things that are happening there okay alright that's really for right now the only thing we need to worry about here so the next thing I'm going to do is um, show you how to edit in the particle mode and that's only going to appear under your mode tab um, after you've created a particle system so um, one thing I will warn you about before you go into particle mode make sure you have everything make sure you have all of these numbers exactly how you want them because once you start editing in the particle mode you cannot go back and change things like the emission amount hair length, um, children, any of that. So um, make sure you're perfectly happy with this and then once you want to actually go in and manipulate how this is falling then you go into the particle mode and um, this will take away your children and basically just gives you a better a better view of what exactly you're doing but don't worry they're still there. Um, so there are a few different options we have in uh, the particle mode area. Basically this just sort of allows you to very um, very very interactively shape your hair or fur or grass. The um, first one is comb and comb is exactly as it sounds. All you do is take the circle which you can change the size of and the strength of the pull and just you, it combs the hair exactly as if you were doing it to yourself. So this is a head and we want the hair to all be going down. Then we just grab it and pull it down. And then you just keep doing this until you're happy with your result. It might take a, a little bit of time to get used to and to get exactly everything the way you want it. So that looks that looks all right. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay. So that's comb. And again, there are for all of these there are options down here that can help you to um, that can that can help you hone this to you know creating like small specifications and things like that. So smooth, um, again, just like it sounds, we're just in case there are any weird stray hairs going on. Um, and you can see some of these are a little weird looking like spider legs, so that's where the uh, higher, higher segments would have helped over here. But as I said, once you're in this mode, you can't go back and change this. However, 
uh, one thing you can do um, if you really need to change something like the segment length is go right here under this uh, panel to free edit and it will you will lose everything you've done in this mode but if you need to do something um, in this window it'll allow you to go back and do that so again I'll just do this again real quick Make sure you always go to all sides to make sure you're not missing any stray hairs. Okay. Alright, so that was smooth, just like it sounds. Add. Okay. You can add hairs, just like it sounds. Drag your mouse around and add hairs if you're not uh if you're not too happy with how if if it looks a little thin to you. And remember, even if it looks thin here, when you render it, it might be something completely different. Okay. Um Okay, add hairs, alright, length, you can grow your hair. This is pretty crazy, so you might want to change this stuff to uh, to help it, to help be able to control it a little bit, but this will help you grow your hair. Okay? And um, you can also shrink your hair with this uh, same tool, just go from grow to shrink, and there you have it. Shrinking your hair back up. And this is just really sort of a fun way to get, you know, any kind of hairstyle that you might want. Anything and everything. Okay. All right. Puff. Just like it sounds. Just add some body to your hair there. In case you want one of those fabulous updos. Something like that. Okay. And see, this is what I'm talking about. This is where more segments would come in handy. It wouldn't be so crazy looking. Okay. Cut. Just like it sounds. Anywhere your uh, circle goes, you just give it a haircut. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna comb this back down. Get a little less crazy. If it's all combed down, we can see exactly what we uh, <laughs> what we got here, so I can give it a, a nicer little haircut. Okay. And get rid of that. Okay. Alright, wait. Um, this is just sort of a paintbrush that lets you paint the uh, weight of your hair. Let's say you have, let's say you have something, uh, some sort of weight that's tied into the hair or something like that. You can make the hair heavier at the bottom than it is at the top and other such effects like that. Um, it's not too terribly important to the look of your hair, but it's more for um, animation purposes and things of that nature. Okay, so um, let's just do a quick render and see what we got here. Well, I say quick. And, uh, particle systems of any type here, grass, clouds, or, uh, or shooting stars, anything like that, they're always going to take a little while to render because there are so many calculations that Blender has to go through to um, get the picture. So there you have it, and it looks like a pretty good, you know, cousin it deal. Um, now um, I will show you. how to, um, in case you wanted this to be, say, a human head, and then you wanted it to obviously not have hair on the f on the face, what you can do is just go with go in with cut and uh, actually move this around the actual frontal area of the face, and that way anywhere that you go here, you're actually cutting the um, hair away completely. So you can go in and do it for the eye area, you know, the face, the cheeks, and uh, ears, and anywhere you don't need the hair to actually come from. Um, there are a few different ways to do this. This is the most direct. There are also um, uh, ways that are similar to uh, assigning different materials where you would just assign certain faces to emit hair and certain ones not to, but that's a that is a different tutorial. So now that you've cut all of the hair away from the front of the cube, or uh, from in front of the sphere, let's render it again and see see what happens. Okay. 
the yin blender taking its sweet time. Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> since there's a uh, the children going on, I can't see exactly all the hair. There's a little bit of a still of a hair growth here, and you can um, go in, uh, tweak the views, and and show the the parents and children and all that good stuff to get rid of all that completely. But that's the basic, the basic way to cut hair. You just keep going and going and going, and then, and uh, eventually you can get it just the way you want to. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of tweaking, but you should be able to get the effect that you're after. Okay, so that is the basics of um, hair particle systems, and you can use those same parameters to do things um, such as making, you know, grass on a plane or fur on an animal or anything like that. Um, and before I leave you, there's one more thing I would like to mention. Um, and it's easy to skip over. So um, if you go to the materials panel, make sure you have the material for your object. <laughs> Um, if you you can change the color of your hair here and the color of your specular make sure your specular is something that you know agrees with the uh, color that you've chosen for your hair uh, something pretty okay um, you want to pay attention to this uh, this menu the strand menu because it can help your hair look pretty realistic if you um, take the time the root size and tip size, okay? So a normal hair or blade of grass, especially if you're doing like for bl or blades of grass, um, especially if you make the root size larger than the tip size, then when you render it's gonna look a lot more realistic because real hair and real grass is always thicker at the bottom than the top. So make sure you pay attention to these as well. So um, strand menu under materials, color under materials, all of the data under particle systems, in particle mode. Make sure you keep all those three things in your head and um, you should be able to come up with some really pretty good looking results. Okay? I will probably um, do another tutorial for you guys later on to show you how to actually animate the hair and use physics and things of that nature, but as far as just simply editing the hair to where you want it to be when you begin your animation, that should get you off to a pretty good start. Okay? All right, well, thank you for watching. Thanks for paying attention. I hope I didn't bore you too much, and I'll see you next time.